Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you could join me. I, I always look forward to your visit. Today, I'm going to bring you another seven books book haul. One of them technically isn't a book, but I am going to qualify it as some sort of book since it is bound. It do have pages. It do. And um, although they are blank. Um, this is a moleskin journal I picked up. I picked it up because I have intentions on transferring my books read from Goodreads into something of a hard copy so that through the years I can keep adding to it the books that I have been reading. I started this and I only got one page in, just one page. Um, and I'm good with that. This is this is a project I'm just going to work on in my spare time. Maybe one page a day, maybe not, maybe one page every two days. I don't know. Whenever I get some time, I will um, continue to keep updating this. I suitable to my own liking and aesthetics. So, like my check on my shirt that goes cheap, cheap, so does the next book cheap cheap five dollars you can't leave a book there for five dollars i don't know anything about auras i've heard of many people saying oh they have such an aura about them don't we all but what is our aura saying about us so i am going to find out about that and i am going to try and keep my aura on the good side so I'm not going to read anything about this. I just wanted to show you. but And I also want to just make mention that this is a stunning cover. And also, every single book that I chose today was chosen strictly for the name of the book and the cover. Those two subject matters conjoined were the sole basis of my decision making. Which, by the way, I should say, I went on this book haul because I had no work the next day. I was excited about that, and I thought, well, let's compound that excitement and get even more excitement, <laughs> and let's go party in the bookstore. Well, I wasn't even in there for four minutes. Four minutes tops. And this is what I walked out the door with. I just, them books just kept like a magnet finding my hand, just in my hand and in my, and stacking them up. Alrighty. I was just, I was just amazed at how quick I was just finding these books left and right. I made it to the bottom end of the first quarter of the bookstore. I didn't even approach the middle of the store because I had already found so many books. And I figured better not get myself in any deeper. No telling what I'm going to come out with. So now let's get into the depth of the books. My first book chosen is entitled Tante Eva by Paula Bomer, East Berlin, a few years after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Eva, a retired nurse, makes it through her day on a combination of stimulants and sleeping pills, wine and brandy. She finds fleeting joy in American jazz and blues records and occasional visits from her married lover. Her friendly teenage neighbor is her closest companion. Then her American niece, Maggie, arrives in Berlin. Eva is thrilled Maggie is just the friend she's been seeking, but happiness begins to slide from Eva's grasp as Maggie's own fierce drug addiction reveals itself. Tante Eva is a story that deftly takes in decades of family life and German history, estrangement, joys, and disappointments. It is a portrait of an East Berlin in the years after the wall came down 
and of an overlooked woman pursuing happiness and <laughs> it is the finest book yet from Paula Bomer, an author whose work Jonathan Franzen described as some of the rawest and most urgent writing I can remember encountering. So I'm looking forward to that one. My second book is Strangers I Know by Claudia Durastanti. Strangers is a beautiful word if you're not forced to be one. Every family has its own mythology, but in this family, none of the myths match up. Claudia's mother says she met her husband when she stopped him from jumping off a bridge. Her father says it happened when he saved her from an attempted robbery. Both parents are deaf, but couldn't be more different. They can't even agree on how they met, much less who needed saving. Claudia comes of age with her brother in this strange and increasingly estranged household split between a small village in southern Italy and New York City after her parents separate. Without even sign language in common, their parents never taught it to the children. Family communications are chaotic and rife with misinterpretation by turns hilarious and devastating. Feeling like a stranger to those she loves most, Claudia longs for a freedom she's not certain actually exists. She begins to create her own mythology to construct her own version of the story of her life. Kinetic, formerly dazzling, and spectacularly original, this book is funny and profound and makes us look anew at how language and family can shape our understanding of the world. A best-selling, award-winning sensation in Italy, Strangers I Know is about whether we can truly know anyone, including ourselves. All right, I'm not going to read this anytime soon. I got it now because it was $3 off. Um, Gwendy's Final Task by Stephen King. Now, I am not a Stephen King reader. I have not read anything by Stephen King. I attempted it. I didn't get too far into that. Um, I plan on picking it up again, uh, but not until October because I like the vibes. I have not even seen the movie because I just don't watch movies. I cannot sit long enough to watch a movie. However, I can sit to read a book. Go figure. So anyways, I am told by the bookseller that this particular book is a series and there are two ahead of this. And I have not read either, but I am going to reference those and then maybe sometime near the end of uh, September, I will just go on a binge and read maybe the three consecutively. I don't know. When Gwendy Peterson was 12, an enigmatic stranger named Richard Farris gave her a mysterious box for safekeeping. It offered treats and vintage coins, but it was dangerous. Pushing any of its seven colored buttons promised death and destruction. Years later, the button box entered Gwendy's life again. A successful novelist and a rising political star, she was once again forced to deal with the temptation that box represented. Now, evil forces seek to possess the button box, and it is up to Senator Gwendy Peterson to keep it from them at all costs. But where can you hide something from such powerful entities? In Gwendy's final task, horror, giants, Stephen King and Richard Chismar take us on a journey from Castle Rock to another famous cursed main city to the MF-1 space station where Gwendy must execute a secret mission to save the world and maybe all worlds. I don't know if it's terrifying or what. I'm hoping that it it is because I don't plan on reading it until the Halloween season. Um... And my Halloween season starts in September. <laughs> so that's why I chose September because I know I won't read it fast enough in that month and it will well lead into October. So maybe I'll just make September and October Stephen King months. I don't know. All right. The next book is beautiful. It's a beautiful book. Don't judge a book by its cover, but I will. The Tobacco Vibes. 
Adele Myers. Could only imagine. Maddie Sykes is a promising seamstress who just arrived in Brightleaf, North Carolina, the tobacco capital of the South, where her aunt has a thriving sewing business. After years of war rations and shortages, Brightleaf is a prosperous wonderland in full technicolor bloom, and Maddie is dazzled by the bustle of the crisply uniformed female factory workers, the palatial homes, and most of all, her aunt's glossiest clientele, the wives of the powerful tobacco executives. When a series of unexpected events thrusts Maddie into the role of lead dressmaker for the town's most influential women, she scrambles to produce their ornate gowns for the biggest party of the season, but she soon learns Bright Leaf isn't quite the carefree paradise that it seems. A trail of misfortune follows many of the women. Although Maddie is quick to believe this is coincidence, she inadvertently uncovers evidence that suggests otherwise. Maddie wants to report what she knows, but in a town where everyone depends on big tobacco to survive, she doesn't know whom to trust and fears that exposing the truth may destroy the lives of the proud, inspiring women with whom she has forged strong bonds. Shedding light on the hidden history of women's activism during the post-war period at its heart, The Tobacco Wives is a deeply human, emotionally satisfying, and dramatic novel about the power of female connection and the importance of seeking the truth. My final book for today's book haul is Carolina Built, Kiana Alexander. A vivid and moving novel based on the incredible life of real estate magnate Josephine N. Leary, a previously untold story of passion, perseverance, and building a legacy. Josephine N. Leary is determined to build a life of her own and a future for her family. When she moves to Edenton, North Carolina, hmm, to North Carolinas, from the plantation where she was born, she is free newly married and ready to follow her dreams. As the demands of daily life pull Josephine's attention away, it becomes increasingly difficult for her to pursue her real estate aspirations. She finds herself immersed in deepening her marriage, mothering her children and being a dutiful daughter and granddaughter. Still, she manages to teach herself to become a businesswoman, handle her finances, and make smart investments in the local real estate market. Yet, with each passing year, there is always another challenge standing between Mrs. Leary and the work of constructing her legacy from the ground up. Evocative and inspiring, Carolina Built speaks to the part of us that dares to dream bigger, to tear down whatever stands in our way, and to create something better for the loved ones we eventually leave behind. A thrill to read, says Denny S. Bryce, author of Wild Women and the Blues. They are my picks. I am excited to read all of them, and I hope that you will go to your local library or your local bookstore and find something that suits you. And if you enjoy what you are reading, please comment. I would love to know what you are reading and um, how you are liking it. So in my previous videos, I say I always try to get a goodie. Well, I don't try to, but a goodie always finds me before I can pull out the old pocketbook. And this time I got a reading light. It's a flexi light, Kitty Flexi Light Pals, the LED book light and bookmark in one. Isn't that awesome? Um, that is super, I don't know if you can see that. Anyways, it is super cute. I'll take it out of the package. Uh, and they had several different ones, owls and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm on a pink kick lately. A lot, of, a lot of my world is revolving around pink. Okay, so there it is. It's a dorb, and right there is where you would attach your page of your book, and let's see here. Is his face the light, and how do you get that? Oh, remove before using. 
All right, we got that. All right, we got that floss. Oh, that's how you turn it on. So it doesn't even, um, his mouth or face doesn't even flip up, but there's just a little switch on the back and then his forehead lights up. It reminds me of when I was um, a runner, everybody was wearing these um, headbands with a little flashlight to see their way in the dark. And so it's almost as if that's what he's wearing, but this is, super super adorable so that is it that is my it's raining out it's raining out there but it's lovely in here that is my book haul i hope it inspires you to pick a book up and get yourself into a reading ritual maybe a little bit in the morning or maybe a little bit to relax you at night or maybe if you catch a free moment during the middle of the day. Whenever, doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you do. So until we meet again, no, I love you. And I can't wait until we can see each other again. Take care and be good to yourself.